First of all, thank you all for, for staying. I know, I know just to follow on what Mike was just saying, it's five o'clock on a Friday, and um, there is really no place I'd rather be right now than talking about employee retention credits. I appreciate that that's probably not the case for the audience here, so I'm gonna try to make this as um, engaging and as quick as possible uh, to talk about how to get money into the hands of your dealership, um, that stimulus money from the, from the government. Just to start out though, a quick show of hands, did any dealers in here get a PPP or a PPP2 loan, a second draw loan? Okay, so we, we have some people that got that. So, so that program, the PPP program, came out of the CARES Act. Um, I know people have talked about various things that have come through the CARES Act, but PPP was a main stimulus program um, through the CARES Act, it was about $700 billion. The uh, Congress created two programs actually. So they created PPP, which I think all of us are very familiar with, and then they created these things called employee retention credits, and no one knows what they are. Um, and part of it is because it's part of the, the, the tax code. Um, there is a statutory mandate that the SBA is supposed to go and evangelize these and create education to businesses throughout the country and talk about it. It's a statutory requirement. They haven't done it yet. So we're out doing it, and um, I go to these shows all over the U.S., and uh, a couple weeks ago we were in Vegas. Today we're here. Um, tomorrow we'll, we'll be somewhere else, and uh, we're talking about employee retention tax credits. Um, and really, I have three main goals of this presentation. So the first one is I want everyone to understand what employee retention credits are so that by the time you, you leave, you say, yep, I got it. When someone says to me ERC or employee retention credits, um, I'm able to, to know what they are. Um, the second thing I want to talk about is qualification, because a lot of um, auto dealers are out there and they're talking to their CPAs, and their CPAs may have read, you know, two sentences on Google that was six or eight months old, and they don't know the first thing about it, and they don't want to know anything about it, and so they have this canned, automatic, kind of visceral response of, don't even worry about it, you don't qualify. Well, I'm here to tell you that that's not true, and you definitely qualify, and we're going to talk through um, qualifications, and even if your revenue was strong, you're still entitled to this money under the CARES Act. Um, the third thing that I want to do is I want to talk about how to actually get the check. And, and this is something that's really important. Um, and I did a, a presentation with the, a sponsored by the state of Arizona with the uh, Arizona Commerce Authority, and we were doing it to uh, small businesses. And as I was talking to Sandra Watson and some other people who run the Arizona Commerce Authority, they said, Eric, they said, if on one end of the spectrum you're talking and it's going to be accountants, and on the other end of the spectrum it's a, a mom and pop store that's a, a dry cleaner with three employees, um, who is this presentation going to go to? I said, we're going to talk about it as if it's the owner, the proprietor of that small you know, dry cleaning shop to talk to them about how to put a check in their pocket. And they said, great, you can do it. So um, I want to deliver the same thing to everyone here so that at the end of this presentation um, people um, know how to get this money. So let's start about what it is. So um, it was part of the CARES Act, and the goal of it uh, was to help employers keep employees on their payroll, and it provides a check for up to $33,000 per employee. We're going to talk about how that math works in a, in a second. So um, it is stimulus money as well. So uh, you know, I think we all are familiar with like the $1,600 checks that went out to individuals. You could think of this as kind of the um, counterpart for um, businesses on, on how they're going to stimulate the economy. Whenever I talk about tax credits, I think people always have this kind of reaction that, um, you know, they've heard of tax credits, like it's kind of this fake thing, like I never really see a check, they're kind of mysterious, and, you know, big companies like Amazon are able to get them and not pay any taxes, but the little guy like me, it just never works out and um, they're never able to actually you know hit the easy button and get the money so one of the things that we also set for our firm as an objective is to take away all those barriers and make sure that at the end of the day you know these things aren't scary they're not hard to get they're not mysterious they're not you know beyond the goalpost, um, and they're not confusing and that we're able to do it and we've done it for a lot of businesses so um, phoenixhousepainting.com $157,000 we claimed for them. Uh, Jalapeno Inferno, just a restaurant, $285,000. That was just one of their locations too. A Lutheran church we did, 
And uh, they were 50 employees. Uh, for 2020, we filed for $327,000 for that church. Um, for 2021, uh, we haven't done the returns yet, but they're gonna be over a million dollars. So there's a lot of money that's available to businesses. Um, I put it, it's hard to see there, but um, I put up actual copies of the returns that, uh, that we filed for them. Um, and it comes back in one of these checks. We've all seen these, these in our mailbox before, probably, those, those treasury checks. It's not like a reduction where um, you, know, you, you just have fewer taxes to pay or something like that. This tax credit actually comes back to you um, in the form of a check. So let's talk about how, how we get to that $33,000 number and where you're gonna be probably a little bit lower than that, um, but still at a, a very healthy amount of money. So for 2020, you're entitled to 50% of what you've paid each employee that's W-2. So if you have 1099 contractors, those don't count. Um, any employee that owns um, directly or indirectly 51% or more of the business does not count either, as well as any relatives to them. So um, if you have your brother and sister and niece and nephew on your payroll, um, those people are excluded. But your um, true, you know, bona fide, unrelated W-2 employees that you've hired, 50% um, of what you've paid them from March 13th of 2020 to December 31st of 2020, capped at $5,000 per employee you can claim. The one other requirement of this is that we have to back out anything that you've paid them that is attributable to PPP forgiveness. So um, you, can't, you can't double dip in other words. So um, what we find is that if an employee is making $40,000 or more, you're gonna get the full $5,000. So um, if they're under that, you're probably gonna get partial of it because some of it likely goes to PPP, um, but it's a case-by-case case, um, situation. For 2021, um, Congress sweetened the pot and they offered 70% of what you've paid each employee capped at $7,000 per employee per quarter. So for quarters one, two, three, and four, $7,000 a quarter would be $28,000. Let's talk about that though for one second. So part of the eligibility of this is that we have to either be able to show one of two things. Either first, a revenue reduction. It's what Congress calls a significant decline in gross receipts. Um, if that was a requirement, it would probably eliminate a lot of people in this room right now. Um, but the good news is, is that Congress gave a second pathway to qualification, and that's because they want this to be stimulus, right? So um, it's really neat. So if, if your, your business was declining, hey, you have eligibility. If your business has done well, but has had governmental orders that have somehow impacted your business, um, you are eligible uh, for the credit. So that's what's known as a partial suspension of operations. So um, a partial suspension of operations can be for example, uh, things like additional time for cleaning and sanitation, um, key suppliers or customers that are unable to make deliveries to you. So uh, we can think about the chip shortage, the global chip shortage right now, where um, you had governmental orders that were shutting down these chip fabrication plants um, and ports were backed up. The LA ports have had more container ships off of them um, right now than in a hundred year history. So. Um, there's a lot of um, supply chain interruption uh, as well as um, other types of uh, changes that have happened um, around cleaning and sanitation, reduced um, capacity of the number of people in a showroom at a time, all sorts of things that allow um, businesses to demonstrate um, a partial suspension of operations. It's really not a very high bar. Um, if you are under 500 employees, you, you don't have to shut down. Your, your workers can continue to be um, working for you, but there just has to be something that's um, changed that make things not quite normal. So for most businesses, that means quarter one and quarter two um, are fair game to, to claim. So uh, we see most auto dealers will claim quarter one, quarter two. There were government orders in effect um, up until June 30th. Uh, we can um, clearly demonstrate that. We take the payroll, we claim it. Uh, quarter three and quarter four, um, the jury is out. So we have um, two different schools of thought on that. One is Delta variant is going to um, create some additional orders that are gonna help us get the, the money for quarter three and quarter four. Um, the second thing is that there were orders in quarter one and quarter two where the effect is being felt in quarter three and four. Um, so you have a causal connection between those two so you can 
make the claim in, in quarter three and quarter four. So um, a lot of money there is available. Um, you can start doing orders of magnitude math in your, in your head if you have you know, 50 employees and you're claiming you know, $19,000 an employee. Well, let's just round that up to 20. 50 times 20 is a million dollars. Um, so there's, there's a lot of money that is, uh, that's available there. Um, what we do as a firm, uh, we're a contingency-based firm, and we really wanted to provide this easy button to businesses. Uh, we've seen a lot of challenges uh, in, in businesses filing the right returns. Um, there was some confusion. The IRS put out this form 7200, and we saw some CPAs saying, oh, just, just file the 7200. Totally wrong way to do it. And um, we're getting a lot of clients right now going, hey, my CPA told me to do this, and I just got this rejection letter from the, from the IRS. Can you come and help us? So we, what we do is, is we do done-for-you services. You give us your payroll journal. We process it through software that we developed. Um, we wrote about just shy of a million lines of code at this point. And then uh, we prepare the, your amended returns um, and file them with the, the IRS. So we make it real, real easy to do. Um, ERC PPP, just a few key points. So both stimulus programs, both came out of the CARES Act, both pump money into the economy, both support businesses. Um, they are two different things, though. So, um, if you had a PPP, you can still get an ERC. Different stimulus money, same principle. The, the, the government is, is trying to push cash and infuse cash into the economy. Um, ERC, oh, go ahead. It is not a loan. So, um, and, and that's kind of um, a, a couple really cool things on it. There, so with PPP, it, w which was a loan, um, and it was also restricted on how you could use the proceeds, ERC, um, you don't have to pay back, and there's no restriction on how you use the funds. Um, so not only there's no forgiveness paperwork to do with it, but you can use it as working capital, um, you can use it as expansion, you can pay down debt with it, you can pay bonuses to owners or employees with it. Um, anything that's going to help you as a business, um, you can use the funds how, however you want. So there's no restriction on how you use the funds. Um, they do not need to be um, paid back either. So it's it's not a loan. Um, it is what's known as a fully refundable tax credit. Um, I don't want to get too technical into um, IRS language uh, on, on this presentation, um, but basically what that means is that um, suppose you've paid $100 of taxes and the credit that we calculate is $1,000, you get the full $1,000 back even though you've only paid 100, um, just for simplicity. So. Uh, in the case here, if one of, you know, jalapenos, let's suppose that they paid 50000 in tax, even though they have a $300,000 claim, they get the full 300000 back. Um, it's a little confusing on the return because you'll, you'll see it split up between what's called a non-refundable and a refundable portion. Um, don't worry about that. Non-refundable doesn't mean you don't get the money back. It means that's what you've actually paid in tax. And then you'll see a refundable portion, uh, which means that's everything above what you've actually paid that the IRS is, is going to give you under the program. Um, so confusing language. Um, we do need to coordinate. So if you have a PPP or a second draw PPP or both, um, if we do the work for you or whichever firm you elect to work with does the work for you, make sure that they know about it. Um, there are statutory restrictions around um, how you allocate the payroll. So we always want to make sure that the PPP loan is satisfied in full um, before we start allocating payroll towards employee retention credits. Um, so we, in the uh, IRS FAQs, it says to maintain documentation about how you did those computations. What we do is we do an Excel sheet that shows each employee in each quarter and then how much money is being allocated to um, each program, and that's how we substantiate the claim and uh, make sure that we're doing it. So um, in most cases, there's plenty of money to, um, to uh, support um, full ERC and full PPP. W one of the other things I would note um, for those that have already filed their PPP forgiveness applications, um, just as a side note, the IRS has addressed a point where, let's say your PPP loan was 300,000 and you had written in payroll costs, you know, 1.2 million. Um, the IRS only considers you allocating up to what's required uh, to, for the PPP forgiveness. So 
um, even though you may have written you know, 1.2 million in payroll on a $300,000 loan, um, that other, you know, whatever it is, 900,000 would be available for um, ERC qualified wages. A couple things to know about um, qualifications. So again, just to reiterate the point, your business has to actually employ people. Um, as much as we would love to help businesses with uh, 1099 contractors, um, if you're a small dealer and you've got you know, a couple people that are you know, working 1099 as commission, um, that's just not gonna cut it with IRS. They actually have to have paid into social security. That's kind of, um, it has to be a W-2 employee. Um, for-profit, non-for-profit, okay. Um, most dealers are gonna be uh, for-profit, but of course, associations like uh, you know, the one hosting here, the Carolinas Independent Auto Dealer Association, um, they are also um, eligible. Uh, and then we need W-2 wages, and then we need some sort of impact, direct or indirect, as a result of a governmental order. Um, and that's anything impacting travel, commerce, or group meetings. Um, you can think about, in the case of like Carolina's Independent Auto Dealers Association, slam dunk, right? Every year they do group meetings related to um, the, the industry. Um, last year that would have been suspended because you couldn't have had you know, more than 10 people aggregating and um, things went virtual. Um, that's very easy for, for, for people to understand. Um, for um, auto industry, it becomes a little bit more abstract, but it's still um, a really good claim and a solid claim. So you're talking, you're looking at things like the fact that I think a lot of people here would have issues with um, getting new vehicles because of chip shortage. Think about your auctions, right? You were no longer going in person. Those all went virtual. Um, so, so different changes in the ways that you would have operated to um, accommodate COVID orders um, and uh, maintain uh, compliance um, and keep your employees healthy. Um, there's a few things that we see in kind of common objections and misconceptions. Uh, one of the, the main ones, and I just really want to drive this point home because um, so many people, there's so much misinformation about this. There are two pathways to qualification. You do not need a revenue decline. Um, right before I actually came in here, uh, Jason, who's uh, in business development with my group, had a, a call from a, a company, and they said, well, you know, my, oh, sorry, Thaddeus had a call with Jason. I apologize about that. Um, and uh, the customer said, well, you know, I, I didn't, my CPA said that I don't qualify. I didn't have a decline in revenue. Um, and so we, we kind of talked through that. Um, if you go back to the IRS documentation, the actual statutory language, uh, it's an or. Show us either substantial decline in gross receipts or a partial suspension of, of operations. Um, another misconception that we see quite commonly is we'll talk to businesses. And they say, well, my CPA does my annual return. He'll just claim the credits then. Um, that's not how it works. So um, these credits are, uh, go against the payroll returns. Most of the CPA firms out there are not um, filing your payroll taxes or doing your payroll returns. So that's happening more with, you know, if you're using ADP or Paychex or Paycom or Paycor, it, do, it doesn't really matter. Whatever your payroll company is, um, they're the ones that are creating the original 941s. They get filed every quarter. Um, your CPA really doesn't get involved with that um, for the most part. Occasionally we see some bookkeepers that get involved with payroll. Um, we have over 180 CPA firms that have either licensed our product or referred to us. Um, a lot of CPAs are, are just saying, hey, look, you know, this is you know, 200 pages of regs for a program that's available for one year. I'm just not gonna get involved with it. Um, and that means one of two things. They're either telling, uh, they're either providing misinformation, they're saying, nope, you don't qualify because they don't wanna to have to read 200 pages of regs to do you know, one or two different um, claims for their clients, um, you know, or um, they're referring to, to groups like us. Um, another thing that we've seen people get confused around is they say, well, as an auto dealer, I was an essential business, so I never had a, a, a full or partial suspension of operations. I was an essential business. Um, this is a really, important point, and it's a, a finer point to make. Um, the order that says you're an essential business and that you can stay open is not the order that uh, we would rely upon in terms of claiming the credits for you, right? It's, it's all these other things that have happened 
um, in, the, in the supply chain and in your business that uh, is what qualifies you. So even though that you're an essential business, you kept your doors open, you were able to service your customers, in fact, you were probably able to, to grow and thrive, um, it's the things like not being able to go and see those cars in person at the auction and having to do it online and um, changes in, in supply chain. And um, we have a, a large um, glass dealer, for example, auto glass dealer, uh, and they can't, they can't get windshields to do replacements because the supply chain is so messed up. So all of those types of things, um, there's a lot of different ones. Um, your inability to come and join um, the Carolina's Independent Auto Dealers Association last year. That's a restriction in, in group meetings that impacted you and your ability to learn and function and grow as an organization. So um, we're having to do that virtually. Um, so those are, those are all things that, um, that qualify your business and, uh, and, and don't underestimate um, how many um, small impacts there were that when aggregated together uh, do actually become significant. Um, in terms of actually filing the claim, there's a document that's called the 941X. Um, don't try to prepare it yourself. Um, you won't do it right. Um, the first time that we tried to do it, embarrassingly enough, we didn't even do it right. The IRS rejected, I think, three or 400 returns that we had initially filed um, and told us to redo all of them, and we had to redo all of them. It was a painful learning lesson. Um, for us, but now uh, we have the, the process down really, really well. Um, so we take your payroll, we take your 941s, um, it goes through our software, we produce reports, um, and uh, we know at this point that they're, um, that they're, that they're great for the, for the IRS. Um, so, and, and, we, and we see a lot of, um, it's, it's interesting too, I'll, I'll just make this comment, um, even with CPA firms where the instructions are um, very specific about how they want these forms filled out. And at the end of it, there's this box that says comments, and it says, um, explain to us, being the IRS, why you're filing this form. And um, I've seen a bunch of these that businesses have shared with me where their accountant just writes in to claim ERC credits, which to any like normal and reasonable person would seem like a personal, like a perfectly legitimate thing to write in that box, like in the comments box, tell us why you're filing this form. Um, if you actually go to the instructions, the IRS wants you to show the math, the math and the calculations from worksheet one in that box on um, how you arrived at your numbers. Um, and so, you know, when our software produces it, it produces a schedule in that, you know, multi-line text box that shows, you know, qualified wages and non-qualified wages and what was paid in. Um, and that's the right answer. And those are the types of small things that will get returns rejected if people try to do them themselves. Um, or if they use people that um, aren't doing it day in, um, day out. Um, in terms of us, we're located Central Phoenix, uh, one North Central downtown, it's awesome. Uh, we're up on the 10th floor. I would like to say we had great views, but there's like skyscrapers all around us, so we just kind of look into other people's windows. Um, my contacts up there will be in booth 83, um, so uh, we're really pleased to be able to partner with Key Profit Solutions and um, Carolina's Independent Auto Dealers Association to help um, all the dealers claim this money. We'd love to get you the money. We'd love to do the work. Um, feel free to stop by and talk to us. Um, if you don't work with us, that's perfectly okay too. There's um, a lot of really good firms out there that, that do this work, um, but we'd love to earn your business. I'm happy to take any questions or anything. Yes? Yeah, great, great question. Um, the answer is it depends. Um, and um, we are we're, we're a percentage of the credits delivered um, with uh, just a nominal kind of retainer deposit. Um, talk to Thaddeus, um, talk to Ryan. Um, we're, 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 it's not egregious. I mean, um, in, you could figure like in the 15% range is, is where we are um, in terms of uh, credits delivered. Um, very, very competitive. So I know Synergy is up at 20%. Um, we, we try to be very competitive in that, but um, they'll work it out with you kind of directly. There's, there's a little bit of, of um, depending on how many employees you have, uh, dictates exactly how much it is to get the returns out the door and then more contingency uh, um, of the credits delivered. So any other questions? Oh, thank you. So Ryan, Ryan Roland is, uh, is, is with, um, 
uh, heads our biz dev team. Um, I'm supposed to say this. So Thaddeus loves golf and is, would love to take anyone golfing um, that wants to challenge him on the court. Uh, it, is, it is our treat. Just uh, come by, see us. Um, and uh, what time? Yeah, so um, 9, 9 a.m. at uh, the TPC Myrtle Beach. So if anyone does want to golf with uh, Thaddeus, he'd, he'd love to, uh, to do, some, do some golf with you all. So any other questions? Or, um, well, well, hopefully we'll see a bunch of you at the, the booth and um, can help your business get these. Thank you.